everyone's against carbohydrates today. And yet, some of the best bodies on the planet eat carbohydrates. The most powerful physician lives within you. The Western way has put us into a box. I have nothing against the West, but they're fantastic at packaging any concept. There are two villages in the Amazon. Both these villages are separated by about 10 kilometers of land. An eagle flies into the first village. The natives see the eagle as an omen of death and suffering. They burn the settlement and they move down the Amazon to find new land. 10 kilometers down, the second village, an eagle flies into that village. The natives see it as good luck. They decide this is the land where we got to cultivate our crops and live. They have a ceremony and they celebrate. The same kind of people, the same bird, but two completely different mindsets. Why am I telling you the story? Because as I speak today, there are millions of people across the world who still believe fourth stage cancer equals death. There are millions of people who don't believe type 2 diabetes can be reversed. As we speak, there are millions of people reversing it. There are millions of people living with thyroid because they believe, my doctor said it's a lifetime disease. But then how is it that millions of people are reversing their thyroid? There are millions of people who are healing what science cannot explain. The number's not small. So in medicine, you write off small miracles as we don't understand it. Just keep it there. Don't talk about it. But when the numbers are in millions, it's the difference. Everyone in this room right now has a different mindset when it comes to nutrition. Let's come straight into nutrition. If you think I'm going to be talking about A2 milk today and A1 milk and whether vegan is better than non-vegetarian, absolutely not. We're going deeper. And I'll tell you why we're going deeper. It's not because it's not important to me. I respect all vegans, non-vegetarians. Be whoever you want to be. But what do the numbers talk? I have equally cancerous vegans, non-vegetarians, pescas, pegans, you name it. Equal. There is no scientific data at all yet showing us. Of course, a cardiovascular patient with inflammation in the heart will definitely benefit from a plant-based diet until inflammation comes down. There are specific choices to be made. But we're going deeper today. How many people drink milk and don't have a problem? How many of people have made a problem with milk even though it suits them? It's individualistic, which brings me to my next point, the beauty of biometrics. Why does biometrics work? Biometrics works on the principle of uniqueness. There are no two similar fingerprints, even in identical twins. What does this teach us? Everyone is unique. What someone else eats doesn't have to suit you or give you the same goals as someone else. If someone meditates for one hour, it doesn't have to bring you the same peace or mindfulness or clarity as someone who meditates for maybe 15 minutes and finds their clarity and peace. Remember uniqueness every time you try to copy a diet, copy a lifestyle, imitate a workout blindly. We can learn. We have a whole ecosystem out there of information and knowledge which we can absorb. But finally, we have to make the decision, what suits me? The most powerful physician lives within you. And that is fasting. No, no, no. Don't, don't get worried about fasting. I'm not talking about 18, 24 hours, everything that the internet's put in your mind. Fasting again. Remember biometrics. I have patients who get the most beautiful results in 12 hours of fasting. I have some who get it in 18, some in 15, some in 14, some in three days. Everyone is different. Why is fasting so powerful? It's a mechanism that is built in us. We're born with it. We are born with it, but everyone eats all the time. There are snacks, improper meal timings, and all of these things that create the first problem. It doesn't matter whether you're having chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, garlic, turmeric, that's important. But it doesn't matter if your digestive system isn't obeying the bio-circadian rhythm of the human body. Let me give you an example. There is something called the MMC. In Mumbai, we have the BMC. What's the job of the BMC? Which they don't do very well. The MMC is your motor migratory complex. It's the housekeeping system of the digestive system. 
Now picture this. When you eat a meal, all of you had breakfast. Within about 90 to 120 minutes, the MMC gets activated. What's the job of the MMC? Imagine a broom sweeping all the toxins, the broken down food, the bacteria, down your small intestine into your colon to prepare for your next bowel movement, which could be 12 hours or 24 hours later. What stops the MMC from working if I'm constantly eating? If it gets activated at a particular time, I've not even finished digesting my breakfast and I'm ready for my cookie and my coffee. Oh, I'm ready for my lunch. I take away some intelligence of the human body, which is designed to work for us, to remove the waste, the toxins, the acidic bits of food, the bad bacteria. That's the intelligence in the human body. Do we need more detox plans or do we need the body to work for us? Do we need to harness the intelligence in the body that already exists in every person in this room? Everyone has an intelligence. We've compromised it. Fasting, what a beautiful, beautiful thing. Famine and feeding. We're built for that. We're built to go without food. And we're built to feast. You can overeat once in a way, and you can fast as well. It works beautifully for the human body but we're constantly overeating, and then we try to punish the body with long fasts. It doesn't work that way. Everything works within a rhythm. You all dance to all this beautiful music this morning. Imagine there was no electronic music, and it was a band playing. And one of the artists played out of tune. From harmony and rhythm, you go to disharmony. The rhythm is broken. You may stop dancing and then start again as they pick it up. Disharmony. Everyone in this room follows a circadian cycle, a rhythm. Your heart beats with a rhythm. Your pulse, your lungs operate at a rhythm. Everything is a rhythm. Why do you enjoy electronic music? Why do people who take substances enjoy it at a different high? Because the frequencies and the rhythm are all controlled by the DJ and by the substance. I'm giving you an example, okay? We operate with rhythms. Your digestive system has a rhythm. Now you tell me what happens if your digestive system is out of rhythm. What happens? You have disharmony. Now you can call that acidity, bloating, constipation, indigest indigestion, dysbiosis, whatever you want. And you can take all the pills and all the concoctions to help with that. But what makes sense to you in the simplest way? Let my body move back into rhythm and create harmony. Now, it's a practical world that we live in. We need to fly, do work, Maybe we can't maintain that rhythm, but it's not impossible. So when it comes to nutrition, the first thing is, how many hours work for you? And you don't need to do it the Western way. The Western way is put us into a box. I have nothing against the West, but they're fantastic at packaging any concept. 16-8, oh, I'm in the 16-8. And I ask them, why not a 17? Why not a 15? And they have no answer. My point is, your body every day will require different hours of fasting. Today you've danced, you're going to be in sessions, you're going to use a lot of brain power. The consumption of energy is going to be more. So maybe you won't be able to fast 16 hours tomorrow, and you'll feel hungry in 12 hours. Now will you eat or stay in the box? And now put your system in stress mode because you're moving to 16 hours when the body's physically hungry. So to make it simple, the circadian way of fasting is the most powerful way of fasting. It produces miracles for us every day. When I say miracles, when you have patients from Siberia or Russia say, hey, Luke, I did the circadian fast and my arthritic pain for 20 years is becoming less, and even I don't know how. The only scientific reason is because inflammation is coming down and your pain's coming down. What is the circadian way of fasting? Okay, don't get worried when I tell you. You can still party, you can still enjoy yourself. Sunset to sunrise, every religion talks about it. You stop eating at sunset, you start eating only after sunrise. Now, it doesn't have to be dot on sunset. Try within an hour after sunset. So in Goa, the sun sets at about 6.58, 72, something. At least try to get your dinner done by 8 o'clock, okay? This doesn't have to be every day. Remember, we're living in balance. Sunday night to Friday, enjoy your weekend. Sleep at 3, sleep at 4, eat what you want because we're trying to live a practical life. For some people who start living the circadian way, they live it their entire life. They no longer feel the need to eat late night meals. They automatically sleep better. So it's for you to try. There's no, if I do this, how do I socialize? Find a way. When you do this, 
it ties in with something called circadian nutrition. Everyone's against carbohydrates today. And yet, some of the best bodies on the planet eat carbohydrates. My point is, what works for you? In the circadian way of living, you may be carb efficient in the morning, or you may be carb efficient at night. So everyone tries to go low carb at dinner time, but guess what, when we flip it on the head and we actually make them go high carb at dinner time and low carb in the morning, they feel better, energy levels, weights better, sugar levels come into place. It's different for everyone. You've got to find your space by doing it. No one can tell you how, not even myself. Your body will tell you how much to eat at every interval. How can a piece of paper with food written on at what time you should eat ever, ever be closely intelligent to the working of the human body? Does your diet make sense right now? We can have a food structure. What are the foods that I need for my immune system, inflammation? And from that food system, you can form your eating plans accordingly. But you don't have to eat like everyone on Instagram. Absolutely not. So the first rule of nutrition is gaps between your meals. Now, of course, if you're highly diabetic, you have a lot of acidity, you need to take medications, and your doctors want you to eat in a particular interval, please follow that for everyone else. Remember, 90 minutes to 120 minutes, if you want to use the power of your MMC, don't eat in between. You can have water, plain water, not the American way, coffee, green tea on a fast. You are not fasting when you put something with caffeine into your system. Break your fast, have all the coffee that you want. You're stimulating cortisol and adrenaline in an empty system that doesn't have any food. That is not fasting the right way. If you're fasting the right way, do it the right way or don't do it at all. What's the second rule of nutrition? We're not talking about food today. How many of you eat with guilt? Whether it's a chocolate, whether I see some hands up there, ice cream, whatever it is, okay? Guilt is a negative emotion. What does guilt do? It increases your cortisol, moves you to the sympathetic nervous system, which actually shuts down your digestive system. How can you digest when you're in the sympathetic nervous system? If you want to eat something that you feel is not meant for you, you either eat it with love, eat it with happiness, or don't eat it at all. Allow your body's intelligence to work for you. Now, of course, I have people who misuse the statement and they come and say, hey, Luke, you know, uh, I'm eating samosas and chocolate cake every day with love and stuff like that. You know, I mean, you know, people twist words and stuff like that, you know. But what I'm trying to say is, when you give in to your cravings, that's how you break cravings. I have a lot of patients who say, Luke, I'm addicted to ice cream. I tell them, for the next week before we start, eat ice cream in the afternoon and in the night, every single day, and come back to me. But then the cravings already started too. What do we crave for? Why do we crave? Why do we crave when things are a little difficult to get or they're forbidden and stuff like that? So give in. Go have all you want and now come back. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. I don't think I want to see ice cream for a while. So the whole point is, the second way, how do we activate the digest digestive system, which is everything? I want all of you to close your eyes right now. Okay, close your eyes. My eyes are open so I can see you. All right? Now I want you to imagine, just listen to what I say. Imagine I am giving you a juicy, sour lemon. And I'm asking you to cut this lemon, okay, this really juicy lemon. As you cut it, the juice is trickling onto your fingers. You can smell the fresh lemon. And now I'm asking you to take that lemon and touch it to your tongue. Lick the lemon. Feel the lemon juice in your mouth. Feel it. Be with that sensation for a bit. All that juice of that lemon on your tongue, it's sour. Open your eyes. What have you noticed happened? Saliva. Yeah, it happened while I was speaking. A thought of a lemon can stimulate the production of saliva. It doesn't end there. What is that saliva doing now which you swallowed? It's going into your system and giving a signal to the human body to start producing hydrochloric acid because the body doesn't know that I'm talking to you. All it knows is it works on communication, hormones and communication, enzymes. Your saliva contains amylase and lipase. It's stimulating your digestive system to start right now. Okay? The thought of a lemon has the power to stimulate digestion. Now think about all the negative chronic thoughts you think. What is it stimulating at a physical level? We'll come back to that. Chew your food. Eat what you want. Okay, not literally. 
eat, but chew your food. Digestion starts in the mouth. There is magic in saliva. People say, Luke, I want to burn fat. How fast do you finish your meals then? Oh, five minutes. Burning of fat starts with you chewing your food because you have lipase that breaks down fat. The process of breakdown of fat starts in your mouth and carbohydrates as well, amylase. Chew your food. Number three, stop these working lunches or eating in a hurry because you gotta get your work done. Once in a way, fine, because your digestive system doesn't work when you're stressed. So why eat? You're better off not eating, finish your work and then sit down and have a peaceful meal. These are the basics. Superfoods don't matter if you're not doing these basics the right way. When you eat mindfully, your body tells you when to stop. How can I tell you whether you need 2,000 calories and 3,000 calories? You know that there are people who count calories? There's an unaccountable number of 800 to 1,000 calories that they don't take into consideration. The brain, the brain burns that many calories in a day. Are you eating for that? And that's why people who try to cut down on their food, they feel lethargic and frustrated and snappy and angry and all of that. Why? Because you're eating lesser than your body needs. These are the rules of nutrition. How do you know if your nutrition is working for you? When you wake up in the morning, you should automatically have the urge to pass a stool. If not immediately, at least within an hour or two hours. Now don't get worried if you're not having that, okay? Don't get worried about that. It's just how nature works. While you're sleeping, all the waste has been accumulated. The moment you wake up into that position, Okay, you squeeze, you get out of bed, or you get up from the floor that you're sleeping. Okay, the circadian rhythm starts, your eyes open, it connects with light, the body knows it's awake. The first thing, eliminate. Why do we clean our homes in the morning first? Eliminate. Now the body gives you an urge, you go to the, to the, to the bathroom and you pass a stool. Nutrition's working for you. Hopefully you didn't strain to pass that stool out or you didn't have like IBS symptoms or constipation. These are simple things. I'm teaching you to listen to your body. You'll have all come here to connect deeply, inner. I love the concept of life plug-in, inner connection. Okay, it's the same thing with nutrition. Of course, when it comes to diseases, you gotta eat for your disease. An ER positive breast cancer will have to eat for their disease because of the hormone involved. A prostate cancer patient, a diabetic, an Alzheimer's patient, an autoimmune patient has to eat for their disease. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the basics. Nutrition, simple. I'm not even mentioned the word organic yet. And I'll tell you why. Organic's good. Support your local farmers, support the environment. We deal, everyone's aware of Tata Memorial Hospital. Yeah, handles under poverty line cases of cancer for children and adults. What do they eat? Do they even come close to the diets that we can consume? Almonds, pumpkin seeds, proteins, nothing, yet they heal. Equally, some of them better than people living in urban cities. So do you think food is really the deal breaker over here, the game changer? No, they go back and they have a carb-heavy meal with lentils and, and rotis and jar and bajra. They don't have concoctions like wheatgrass and all these things that we have. But they're still surviving and many of them are thriving. So yes, nutrition is important, but it's not everything. It's not everything. You can be basic with your nutrition, but smarter with your movement, emotional wellness, and sleep.